Wow. <laughs> that is going to be cut down <laughs> so much. That, that was dumb. <laughs> Everything about that was stupid. Welcome to the show, guys. My name is Dylan. Austin. That's Austin, because all he says is his name. Sponsored by Kirkland Signature Purified Water. Incredibly Kirklandiable. Sorry if uh, my guitar tone sounds like shit. Uh, I have it no sustainable gain <laughs> at all on this guitar or the, just the X of X. I have not used it enough to know whether or not I can make the sustain longer. I just need to fuck with it for a couple hours. Welcome to Maple. <laughs> Once it calms down, she's just like, hey, what's up, guys? What are you doing? <laughs> what's, what's going on? So much shit in here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> As you guys can see, there's a celebration. Three weeks ago, I bought a DW drum set. Nice. You see the tops of the toms, but it's, it's green. It's a green design series. It's like a seafoam matte. Uh, I wouldn't say seafoam. It's green. Yeah. Maybe like a dirty seafoam matte gloss. <laughs> it's not glossy. It's definitely matte. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. Right, right. Uh, but I love the kit. Sounds really good. Plays really good. And it feels way better. Like way. It's not dead. Plus the, the snare that I got is a collector's snare. So it's like very good. It's a, what a black brass. Uh, Something like that. Nick black uh, nickel over brass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it is definitely that. <laughs> but how, how have you been? How, let's, see, let's talk about Austin. Where have you been lately? <laughs> Just got back from a radio tour. Uh, a radio some... tour. <clears throat> yes. It's literally, uh, we did a series of like eight shows, something like that. They were just all going to radio stations and playing their radio specific events. Some were acoustic shows, some were full band shows that they just rented things for me. But they were all fly dates. First all of all, what was the tour called? And it, who was it for? It didn't they don't really, have context. It didn't have... Uh, the tour was for Letdown, but there was no, like... It wasn't called anything. <laughs> it was just the radio tour. There, None of these things that we went to, besides, like, the thing in St. Louis, was something where you could, like, purchase a ticket. It was all just, like, playing in radio stations to the people of the radio station. Hmm, that's cool. So, Wait, but I, thought, I saw you play on stage, like a big stage. Well, the, the only one was uh, Point Fest, St. Louis. So the good one. Yes. That That's one the one that we played. The radio station, it was like sponsored. It's like 105.7 The Point. That's It's a radio station sponsored event. 105.7 The Cum. <laughs> the Cumming. <laughs> <laughs> so explain. Let's, let's hear about what happened. How did it all start? That's what this whole episode is about. This whole episode is about your tour. Hell yeah. But before we get into that tour, I'll tell you this. I saw Dayseeker live, and it was their Dark Sun tour. Yeah. And it was amazing. I got myself a uh, album, signed album. Yep. They're really good live. Oh, Incredible sure. show. Incredible show. Uh, their lighting was amazing, but it was for them. So, And then uh, Rain City Drive played, and they played one of their new songs that has Dayseeker in it. And the song's really good. Rory came out in the middle of the set and people went crazy. That's awesome. As they always should because he's got an amazing voice. And then uh, the new song that they put out is very catchy. It's very good. They have finally strayed away at this point from slaves. Like they are not slaves anymore. Yeah, not even Rain close. City Drive. They do not sound. Well, I know they changed their names, but they also changed their style. They're just not the same band. Yeah. Like they don't sound the same at all. I just, I want to, I guess before I say something about this, I, I want to make sure I'm correct on my my thing here it's something about the new song i believe christian the guy that was over at my house uh maybe not oh yeah there it is uh the new song that they put out uh that say when guy that i had over at my house that wants to do content and all that he uh wrote some of that song for who rain city drive that new song that you were like that's really good it is a really good song yeah, I didn't he, know he wrote it. Yeah, he wrote some of it. It was awesome. He was he went to one of those shows and he was like side stage and he was like, this song, I'm so happy about this song. This song fucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you ever have a chance to see Dave Seeker, go see him. They had too small of a venue. Uh, oh, way they too sold small. out super fast. Venue was too small. So their tickets rose in price like crazy. I don't even know what they were base price. They were probably like 
like 20 30 bucks and then they like 150 a ticket for me and brandy to go that's insane it was so expensive and then day of i saw tickets go up to 200 show was amazing very worth seeing day seeker live they even said something in the middle of the show rory did he was talking about like a lot of struggles and stuff like that uh he talked in a way that was very understandable but one thing that he was talking about, he was not sure if Dayseeker was going to be a band after Sleep Token came out. Yeah. He legitimately thought Sleep Token was going to ruin them. Hmm. Maybe not his words, but he was like, I, I just wasn't sure if they were going to, we were going to be a thing anymore. Like they were just taking over like crazy. And it, it probably does suck to see someone who came much further after you explode so fast. Yeah. Because Sleep Token really is like a anomaly. Mm-hmm. Like they exploded fast, fast. Like people I, have never seen. Yeah. Um, I think partially it was because of that stupid TikTok. It helps. Whatever helps. Did you see that video? Isn't that how Blake <laughs> got famous? No. Well, didn't you see their TikTok? No. That popped him off? No. It was literally like the guitarist was laying on the ground playing and like the vocalist was like dry humping him on top of on top of him on stage. And it had like their music in the background and that's what popped him off. <laughs> I'll have to show you the video later after this. No way. That's no. literally the reason why they popped off on TikTok. I've also heard that they uh they do weird shit like that on stage anyways. Yeah, like literally after that show, their their career went from like like here and it went way up here after that video release. Which is crazy. If you ever get a chance to see them live, uh take the chance because they don't come to the US very often. Like mm-hmm. they have one tour date here or not even a tour, just one date here. And I think they canceled it. I'm not sure. Yeah. But they don't play very much here, like at all. So <laughs> we're trying to find a day to go see him. Uh, but yeah, Dayseeker said that. And I was like, oh, that's, I'm surprised you had that fear. Yeah. Because I think Rory's voice is so unique. Yeah. His voice is like, <clears throat> stands out. His voice stands out amongst great singers. I agree with that 100%. Uh, but uh, did I ever tell you about whenever we went to the practice space in Nashville? And the girl there was like, oh, yeah, we just had a sleep token in here like two days ago. No <laughs> And way. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, why couldn't we have been here like two days earlier? Like just here and just walk through the halls and be like, oh, my God, that's sleep token playing. And I'll just go up to the door. walk for a while. <laughs> Get them changes. Oh, that would have been so cool. I would have been like, whoa. And they would have been like, oh, no cameras anywhere. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So if you have a camera, you're not allowed in here, period. No one's allowed. I'm sure no one's allowed around them, hardly. Yeah. Because they're trying to be so private. You almost can't have, you almost ha- cannot have fan interaction. Like, it's only stage or that's it. Mm-hmm. Which, which is really weird. But yeah. they want to distance themselves like that. That that does suck in a live aspect because, like, you want to meet your fans. But they personally. But, like, I understand where, like, they kind of want to be anonymous. But at the same time, it's like. I don't know. It's like, that's the rock star life. You, I think they want to live the rock star life, but they w- still want to go out and eat normally. Yeah. I totally understand that. Their identities haven't come out yet, but anyways. Oh, they, they've come out. People know who they are. Oh, they do? Yeah. I thought They're, that was still a secret. Oh, no. Like, everyone knows. Like, if you look up the vocalist, you'll find him easy. Oh, okay. You can, you, they even have, like, all of his past projects, and you hear him singing and, like, earlier stuff before Sleep Token. You're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely him. Yeah. All right. Give us a rundown of the tour. That was my, mostly my big music thing was my drum set and uh, sleep and Dayseeker. Yeah. Well, this tour, it went for, I want to say, 10, 10, 11 days. And they were literally all fly dates. First one was fly to Vegas. Played in Vegas. We did this. Ah, that was the second one. There was two. There was an outdoor stage in Vegas that we played, and it was like incredibly hot day. Uh, You're in the desert. Yeah. It was during the day. Yeah. Oh. It, was, it was like I think we played at like two thirty or three o'clock, really early. But we got there. Uh, they have like I didn't have to bring a drum set to any of these, which is awesome. There was just a drum set that was either rented or that was like a house kit that was actually pretty decent. You didn't but, get to bring your cymbals? <clears throat> no, didn't have to bring anything. Which I should have because at the last date in the the New York thing, 
uh, everyone had their own symbols and snare, and I had to borrow some. And the dude that let me borrow the symbols were like five hundred dollars symbols. Oh God! They were like the the Peisty Master Series, which for the two, the two symbols that he had and the hi hats, he had sixteen inch crash hi hats. <laughs> he had two sixteen inch <laughs> crash symbols as his hi hats. That's they such sounded a low tone. Great though, they sounded so good. But back to the Vegas one. Uh, yeah, we did this. It was a outdoor radio festival. It's the first time they ever did it. Uh, they had, I think, like eight bands or something like that play. And it was a beautiful day for it. You could tell it was a little bit disorganized. But, I mean, it was it was mainly just going to be like <laughs> kind of our practice show, in a sense. Right. Because there were still songs that like we were comfortable with, but not at the same time. At least not enough. Right. Hi, Meeple. <clears throat> and yeah, we had a we had a blast there. We played. It was just in this big field. Everyone spread out, and we had some of the big loud people there. They gave us food for free. Awesome. Yeah, there wasn't too much to say about the Vegas one. I actually kind of forgot about the Vegas one completely like by the end of that week i was like what did we do in vegas i don't even remember anything in vegas the only thing i remember in vegas is i put ten dollars in a machine and won 125 and then i went and bought me an la dodgers jersey for free yeah it was awesome free jersey i bought that and that was my my favorite buy of that that run because i used that jersey i think in like three three of those shows nice that's awesome uh the so how many shows was it we had Vegas, Salt Lake City, Fort Collins, Colorado Springs, Chicago, St. Louis, and then New York. But some of those things, we did like two events. Uh, oh. The New York one, we did uh, a show, like there was a full band show, and then we did a, like an interview acoustic thing at the second day, and we did it in the Touch Tunes building. Wow, touch tunes. I didn't even know. I thought they were just a jukebox. No. I didn't know they actually had like it was a real thing. Yeah. And you know what? They gave us almost more credits than I will ever use in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I could go into a building and just play Nickelback for 38 hours straight and just oh, wow. skip everyone. <laughs> no joke. Then each card is like 5 credits. And I have about this big of a stack. Oh, my God. And I put, like, this big of a stack in my phone while I was sitting there watching other people play. <laughs> I've got... I literally have $200 in credits on my account right now. They're just like, hey, if you're going to play for us, we'll let you play music for free. Yeah. They they just didn't care. They gave us everything Dude, we Dude, I'm not going to lie. Touch Tunes was a brilliant idea. <clears throat> it's a jukebox that's wireless and controlled by your phone. Yeah. You figured that it would have came around earlier than it did, though. Mm, I mean, it came out a while ago. It just didn't really start populating in like all these other buildings until... Yeah, until they had to make a profit, and then they were like, everywhere, every single Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, every Waffle House. That's where they always are. Waffle House all always them. has a jukebox. All the Waffle House. But some of these stages that we played, like, I remember... Oh, I got to tell you some funny things about uh, the Salt Lake show. We got in, well, I'll say about the hotel first. So we get in, and Salt Lake City is like a really like Christian town. Like like that city is very like, there's no alcohol, that porn is blocked on the internet. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God of porn. <laughs> like literally <laughs> all that stuff is blocked in Salt Lake City. And we wow. we even tried to make sure that was real, and we went to Pornhub, and it was just not there. Well, like it was it was blocked, and you had to like sign in and like register your phone and your name to like get into it. To get into it, what is it? I guess the site. What site? Pornhub. Oh. So I, I don't know if it was fully. <laughs> this blocked. guy watches yeah. porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is, and it's like I think it just makes you not want to do it. But uh, yeah, so like we beyond go, Satan, <laughs> we, <Sorry. laughs> we get into this uh, this really nice hotel and like the last really nice hotel that we had, they had like 
cookies at the front desk. Brian goes up, Brian, our sound guy, goes up to the front desk and he's like, hey, do you have like cookies or like snacks or something? And she goes, what? And he goes, snacks. (laughs) Do you have them? (laughs) (laughs) It's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. God. It was, hey, dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks. Do you have them? <laughs> oh, everyone was dying. I, uh, I wish I would have heard it like from where I was. I was just, I just heard about it and it was, it was great. I was like on the other side of the room, just like sitting because we we ordered like five pizzas that night and yeah, we just, why? I don't know. We had so much pizza in my room and like I'd try to sleep and it just smells like a Papa John's in our room. That tracks. And then we had, (laughs) oh, we had the hot tub in that building for some reason. It was so bad. Like you lift your hand up and it was just like milky. Oh, oh, that was in your hotel. It was disgusting. Was it downstairs near the pool or was it like in downstairs in the pool? It was not good. It's filled with jism and skin. You'd put your hands in your sink. And it's just like, literally like jizz water. <laughs> so why'd you get in? We didn't know it until we got uh, out. Trying to catch a UTI over here. <laughs> uh, it was not good. But I mean, besides that, I mean, the Salt Lake City stuff, uh, as again, it's one of those things where I barely remember that city. I think it was more so like all the funny things that was happening, like about like everything being blocked Brian, they, okay, this is, this is funny too. So whenever we got into the hot tub, Brian was like, man, I really want to drink a beer right now. And he, he's like, okay, I'm just going to walk across the street, goes across the street. And like, he's already outside of the hotel building. And then we figure out that the water's milky and we're like, okay, yeah, we're getting out. We're done. And so we were in literally in the water like five minutes. Brian's like down the street trying to buy beer somewhere <laughs> and only three people wanted to drink beer. So they only needed like six beers. That's it. He goes and buys a fucking 30 pack and then comes back to the hotel and everyone's like, no, I don't feel like drinking in the hot tub. We're not going to the hot tub anymore. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so by the time like we left there, we had like so much extra pizza and we had like 28 cans of beer that just sat and we left <laughs> you left the beer <clears throat> yeah no way we had to go fly so they oh. just left it sad face <laughs> you should have just drank that shit yeah been trashed on the it. airplane Could've i bought been. this oh. alcohol poisoning ensues <laughs> i think the most notable show of that tour i think um besides the actual festival date was that Chicago show. The Chicago one, we were literally like in the NBC building in downtown Chicago. Like we we were in the shit. <laughs> and wow. We took uh this elevator up to it was Q101, which is Q101 is. Chicago's yes. alternative. Q101. They did had you go to, this did nice you go to his house to Brian's house. Uh Blake did. All of us uh, had hotels, so we, we stayed there. But, um, yeah, we went to Q101, and they helped us get everything up into their room. And all their stuff, like the soundproofing, like you'd walk, and it's like big studio with like five big monitors and like this on-air thing. You got like five or six really expensive microphones all hanging down on these really like thick boom arms. And, like, the the rooms are completely soundproof. Every single door had, like, this thick of soundproofing on it. So it's real, like, it's almost, it's not just soundproofing. It's, like, like what I got on the walls right now is sound dampening. Like, soundproofing, there's even, like, there's a a way to, like, have bass catches. So when you hit the, when you hit, uh, like, a bass drum, it just dies. Yeah. But that, that thick of soundproof is, it's going to be pretty quiet. But... For the people that don't know about Q101, Q101 is probably one of the biggest alternative radio stations based in Chicago. And there's been people like the ones that I know the most are Panic at the Disco. They did like a full live band show there. Paramore played a show there. 
Billie Eilish did like an acoustic breakdown set there. And whoever else, like literally most, like a lot of the top artists in the world has played that little tiny lounge stage. And whenever we were playing it, I had my little cajon. We were like in the middle of like the second or third song. And I was just like, where am I? (laughs) Like (laughs) literally I am on a stage that is, although tiny has had massive people on it and it just didn't feel like I deserved to be there. <laughs> I, could, I could definitely feel that. I mean, of course you do. They don't even know. They didn't know back then that they were on such a big stage probably back then. Oh, no. I mean, these are recent things. Like, this is Panic at the Disco, like, last few months ago. Like, the, this is, like, recent stuff. Oh, well, then that's awesome. Yeah. Glad you got to do that. Now, you <laughs> all you got to do is play, uh, what's that? That one in Nashville, the big one, the old Opry. Grand oh, Old Opry. Yeah. That's like the, the next. That's like the biggest stage in the East Coast, I think. But that's like. Probably not. There's probably a bigger stages in New York. I guess Madison Square Garden is. Yeah. Like the Opry, I think. I don't know if it only tailors to like country style artists. Mm. Because that's a lot of what I see that gets promoted there. But. Mm, is what it is. I'm sure there's got to be alternative music, music that comes to it too. But. Yeah, I maybe. Know. I really don't know too much about the Opry besides just seeing famous country artists. So play. what else? What else? Tell us more. There's got to be more stories. I saw an awesome picture of Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Throw that picture up, me. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good we'll looking just, picture. <laughs> we'll just show it like that. So our content. Check out this one. <laughs> it's even our, better. <laughs> our content guy Hunter. He showed us this app called West. And it's literally just something where it makes all your phone photos look like old grainy film photos. And it like, it does all the coloring itself. It does all the grain, everything. You just simply snap a picture. And there's one like in the wide angle lens and you can just put it up to someone's face and it just distorts it heavily (laughs) and just looks insanely funny. It's and the best. as you saw in those too, he looks nothing like that. He probably very embarrassed about those. No, photos. he looks It'd exactly so like that. <laughs> he looks, it's really odd. He looks exactly like that. What'd you say he looked like earlier? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Can you help me out? No. I, th- <laughs> I think you were alluding to it. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us what he looks like. No, yeah. <laughs> Put it in the comments. <laughs> Oh, that could be bad. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> but, I mean, I'm trying to think of, like, all these other really funny stories because I know there's there's too much to think about right at the moment. Like, I'd have to have, like, a list of everything I wanted to talk about that was just, like, I don't hilarious. have the list. You're the, you're in control of the list. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> We have 30. We're doing 30. We've done 38 minutes and 12 of that's gone. you got plenty of time to think. <laughs> <laughs> True. Ah, uh, man. Well, was there any van shenanigans or airplane shenanigans? Oh, um, so van shenanigans. You know what's funny? This is pretty much his diary. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast. You'll never remember some of the things that you're going to say today until you watch this again. There was there was one airport scenario, two airport scenarios, two that were just awful. There was this so like. Do you know how whenever you go into an airport, it's busy? You got the people that work outside doing your baggage claims, stuff like that? Yeah. Well, they work for tips, and I guess they don't make anything from the airline. They work for tips? Yeah, it's tips. Oh, fuck. So, <laughs> there, is a, there is one old lady. We literally were packing like 12 to like 15 bags or something like that. All of us had two carry-ons. Did all you, of us had... Did you already crush your... Your Red Bull? Yeah. Oh my God. Go on. <laughs> we had, so healthy. <laughs> we all had like two bags going on the plane, two bags going in the plane. And like there was this one lady. We had, this was whenever we just got done in Chicago and we were flying to St. Louis and two of our guys are staying in Chicago for one extra night and they were going to fly to St. Louis that morning. And so we had like an extra we, it, we got it down to like one extra bag that we had to pay for as like a third bag for someone and we get to that very last bag and we're like oh my god like uh, let's count like 
did we not do something correctly? Do we not count it right? And after like 10, 15 minutes of working with this lady, she comes around the front. She's like, you guys need to hurry up. Like I'm trying to make a living here and you all are taking a long time. And I'm like, you're doing your job. Like, you, we're not even done working with you and you're already saying stuff like this It's basically telling us like, shoo, shoo, like you're, you're wasting my time. Like I need tips, go away. And at that time we were all already pissed off because we were still working with her. And then I see it as like, like a large bill for a restaurant. Like if you're going to take a lot of time and effort, like going back to this table over and over, cause there's a lot of food or a lot of people, you're going to get a bigger tip. And I think she was just thinking that we weren't going to tip or something like that, which we were, we had money in our hands. But after she said that and started throwing a fit back in the pocket, did you tell her that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did. What did you say? Well, cause Blake, I would have been like, well, I was going to give you this 50, but now you don't deserve it. <laughs> well, Blake, I, I forgot what Blake said, but he, he said something about like, I was, I was going to tip you and now you can F off something like that. But and he started walking away. And do you know those like, like the, the little rope lines where like you lift it up and then it retracts into the other pole. Yeah. He, he tried to go under it and just completely <laughs> fucked it up. It started like it disconnected, went into one thing. And I think one of them tipped over and he just kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> After was, that happened? Yeah. And I was just like, well, that's him, not me. And I just kept walking too. <clears throat> I mean... And so I don't know what to tell you about that. Serve good service. I mean, I'm sorry if you, I'm I'm not really sorry if you're going to be mean to me about it. Yeah, we were just like, go get another job. Like, go get something different. Like, if you really hate this job, go somewhere else. And we ended up going inside to do the one bag with someone else. And she walked inside, got with her manager, and was like, double check them. Like, make sure that like, because we had uh, media passes. That was getting us like free oversized bags. And uh, she was just like, you need to look at those. Look at them. Look at them. Like, I, I don't think they're legit and all that stuff. And oh, my God, it was it was bad. And that's one lady that I feel like all of us wanted to hit in the face for like the whole next day. Wow. Yeah, she was extremely rude. And like we were literally just trying to figure out who's getting this last bag And then she comes out and says, you guys need to hurry up. Like, I'm trying to make a living here. You need to move out of the way. Interesting. What's the other one? You said there were two. That was one. Well, the second one is, so like we had those media passes. They allow us to get uh, like free oversized bags and pre-boarding for like our instruments and stuff like that. Well, we had literally been doing this the whole entire tour. We've done like seven to eight previous flights where they're like, okay, here's your pre-boarding. Okay, here's your free oversize. And there's give us what we need. Well, this one gate guy, uh, he, That's gate, a, good, <laughs> gate good, guy. Good, good emphasis on the T. <laughs> <laughs> this gate guy. It's fucking. Uh, came up, like Brian went up to him and was like, hey, I'm here to get my pre-boarding. And the guy's like, do you have a camera? And Brian is like, no, I I personally don't. And he's like, you have to have an expensive camera to get pre-boarding. And Brian is like, uh, we've literally done like eight flights and this has not been an issue. And he was like, just saying like, well, I'm just telling you that you you don't fit within the guideline guidelines to get pre-boarding. I can't let you do that. And Brian's like, okay, I'm just going to go somewhere else. And so Brian sits down, he sits over next to us and he's waiting for his actual gate. He had to go to our gate because that it redirected him over there, but he was going to Chicago. We were going to Nashville and he, like the guy from his gate or our gate prints off papers showing what the parameters are to get pre-boarding and starts slowly walking all the way over. He leaves the gate, starts walking all the way over to us and he does like a little hair flip thing comes over. He's like, here's the, here's the rules on pre-boarding. And it's like, it sticks the paper in Brian's face. And it's just like, see, you have to have an expensive camera or camera gear to get pre-boarding. And you don't have that. And Brian is like, we have cameras. 
and they're just not mine. He's like, oh, well, you said you didn't have cameras. And I'm like, we do, but it's not it's not his and he's going to a different city so this dude's still shoving this paper in brian's face and brian's just like okay you win back the fuck up like it it almost got really bad blake stood up and sat across a different row to get away from this and he was just like (laughs) "Mm." of course he was (laughs) that's very much a blake move first of all second of all Brian, if you guys don't know, is pretty nonchalant. He mostly doesn't give a shit. Uh, so mostly. I could see, I could see, like, I just don't see him getting riled up at all. Oh, I saw him like, a few times get pretty mad. Right. I've just not seen it. And I was just like, I couldn't imagine Blake or, or just Brian just being like, can I see that? I would honestly, it would have been a badass movie. It would have been like, oh, can I see those rules so I could read them real quick and just ripped them up and threw them on the floor? God, that would have been great. Oh my God. He was like, if that dude got any closer, I was about to get kicked out of this airport. Like I was going to get kicked out of this airport. 100% if he got any closer to me. You said gate guy, right? Yes, gate. Okay, cool. Because the way you even made it sound. It's it funny because like- I think he was gay too. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was. Wow, what a pre prima donna. Uh, we've done this eight <laughs> times. Do you really want to, us to call the cert, certain people? <laughs> yeah, so Brian ended up going to his gate whenever they came back and they gave him his pre-boarding and he just said, ah, fuck you. <laughs> he should have been like, hey, you see this pre-boarding pass? <laughs> oh, it would have been, that dude would have complained up a storm to like about that person giving him pre-boarding. I don't understand why they, I mean, I know you're care. supposed to care. Like there, someone has to care. But like, why? Like the plane was so empty that we literally had. It was almost like a every private person, flight. Yeah, every person on that plane had a whole row to themselves. Wow, that's pretty empty. Yeah, it was awesome. But for that dude to be complaining the way he was about this whole pre-boarding thing, it's like the flight's got like sixty open seats, if not more, and it's like just just give him the pre-boarding. It's fine. We do have media stuff. He has media passes. He has a company with like his name on it. His face is on the badge, shows all the information. And yeah, it should have been no issue. I've got an expensive camera. (laughs) This thing was fucking almost two grand. This is an expensive camera. You wouldn't be wrong. He should have just taken out his phone. (laughs) Yep, here's my expensive camera. He never would have been. He would have been like, that's clearly not a camera. I would have been like, I'll take your picture right now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but back back to the main story. I'm just, there wasn't really anything too crazy with the whole rest of the week. I'm just going to go straight to Point Fest. Because Point Fest is the real talk of the town story that I've been going over and over with people. It's It was literally an incredible day. <clears throat> so if you don't know about Point Fest, it's the, the radio show. Uh, like specific festival they've had massive bands like Limp Bizkit Deftones all that stuff there before and just it has an insane reputation but it's still not like Deftones that's huge I was trying to tell someone about uh, I was trying to tell someone that like oh who is Sleep Tokens influence and Mm -hmm. clearly one of them is Deftones yeah Uh, and I could not remember the name of the damn band anyway go on but so we get into this venue and we roll up, we got all of our gear and like we go immediately. The first thing I tried to do is like we had a rental drum set and we went to go find that guy. And what was awesome is like he was there and he was like, hey, cool, I'll get it set up for you. And dude literally just started setting up everything by himself, like on the riser. And I didn't really even have to touch it until everything was like ready you had a drum tech basically yeah it's wow, awesome <laughs> basically it was so cool that was my first experience where it's just like oh here's your drum set you go hang out i'll get it set up because i guess that's part of what the rental fee is oh i didn't know that i i've experienced times where like a drum set's just sitting there and no one's there with it but so this dude gets his drum set set up for me we do our sound checks uh, incredibly bouncy stage. Like you go up and down like this. Oh, that's the best fucking though. Laptop is just shaking. That's, the, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> bouncy stages are great otherwise. Cause then you're just like, yeah, let's go. 
Yeah, it was an awesome stage. Uh, pretty big. And, of course, it was an incredibly hot day. We thought it was going to be a lot cooler being in St. Louis. And the the stage that we were on was just like a paved parking lot. So it just got really hot. Yeah. And we had uh, we had this trailer off to the right of backstage that was basically all ours. It had deli meats, chips, anything you can think of, like food, drink. And, I, of course, I indulged in that because Freeze food, free. Freeze free. <laughs> free food is awesome. And uh, they gave us, like, these uh, food vouchers and stuff like that, too. So we got breakfast, lunch, and dinner for free. And they were, like, really good dinners. Really good dinners. But that was just some of, like, kind of what they cater to. But... If you don't know any of the big bands from this year, there was a, a band called Avatar, a band called Grandson, uh, Wage War, which I got a funny story about that. Oh, God. All I right. got a Wage War story, and then it was Bad Omens, which those guys, I think, are kind of pricks, but <clears throat> yeah. And so we get we get ready for this, this festival. I never really heard of Point Fest until we got asked to play it, and... I really didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to like, I saw how much space the crowd was given, but I didn't think there would be like maybe 500 people, five, 600, maybe because we played, I'm pretty sure is like two 30 or three 30, but luckily it was on a Saturday. And so I'm, I'm sitting here thinking we're going to play an awesome show. We're going to have like this many people. It's going to be cool. Well, first band starts rolling along. And that first band had the amount of people of what I thought we were going to be playing to. And <clears throat> like first band plays, good crowd. Second band comes on, crowd's a lot bigger. And then by the time we got up there, it was just like there was almost no holes in this whole parking lot. It was just completely packed. That's awesome. And one of the coolest things, like this is one of the first times that I've seen this many people do it, but I think I, I already told you this once, but... He was like, how many people have heard of Letdown before? And I swear, like, the whole front half of that crowd put their hands up. And it was just like, this is going to be sick. There's actually a lot of people that were singing the songs and stuff like that, too. And you see people getting into it, like, from here to here. Just, like, full spectrum of, like, people listening and singing along. How'd that feel? It was really cool. It It made that show way better seeing that kind of a crowd and oh what what was the one funny thing oh way so yeah we got we got done with that show and it was absolutely incredible my fiance cassie was there and we didn't since we didn't have our film guy uh for that show he literally went on every other show of that tour besides that big one (laughs) because he had to do stuff at three doors down which is he's like the main guy for them and we gave Cassie a camera and she filmed, she filmed almost the whole set. I just saw her up in the front, like <laughs> doing her thing. And I was telling her about like, okay, if, if, if the exposure gets past this point, like turn it down, like close the lens or whatever a little bit. And there was one part where like visibly during the show, like during the show, I was looking down at her and you can see her just like struggle face. She's like, <laughs> Like sitting there trying to spin it, <laughs> like mess with the ISOs and the F stops and all that stuff, and I, I just started laughing. She did get a lot of cool stuff though. I'm happy she did that. But I want to go to this wage war part. I feel like I'm terrible at these stories. No, you're doing good because that's hilarious. There's, I mean, you'll never, re- you won't remember that. You might remember that, but oh, I'll remember that for sure. But uh, there's just there's so much to talk about. And I'm just like skipping from story to story. That's fine. Skip from story <laughs> to story. Give me the recap. So uh, whenever we were walking around, this is like a few hours after we got done playing. <laughs> a few hours after we got done playing, some dude's like, oh, my God, can I come get a picture with you? And I'm like, sick, awesome. And he's like, yeah, I love your all's new song, Tombstone. And I'm like. <laughs> that that's not us. He's like, what? You're not wage war? They're like, 
no we're not wage war he's like oh you look exactly like the guitarist and then seeing blake he thought blake was the screamer of wage war and i'm like no that's not us and he showed me a picture of the guitarist of wage war and i could somewhat see a resemblance but it was definitely not me and so this guy's like well fuck uh, can I get a picture with you anyway? <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I don't want to miss this opportunity. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> sure, yeah, let's go ahead. And uh, it was funny because Blake got mistaken for Wage War, I think, three times that festival. Wow. Yeah. Three times? Three separate occasions? Yeah, he's three gotta, separate he's occasions. lose that hair. Put that thing up in a man bun. Yeah, everyone kept on thinking he was the, the screamer of Wage War. <gasps> oh! Anyway, so that was the funny story for Wage War. Yes, but I know there's there's so many funny stories. It's just all locked in here. And after we get done recording this, I'm going to remember them. I'm sure you will. And absolutely. I'm, I'm going to hate it. And then I'm just going to tell you and all these people are going to know until next week. Yes. Next time on Dragon. Anyway. Dragon my balls. On your Z. <laughs> <laughs> But well, uh, unless you have something that you want to finish off on, not. <laughs> <laughs> not not that way, but like, is there anything that you want to finish the, the is there set, anything the you podcast come on? with? <laughs> <laughs> not that way, but is there anything? <sighs> Fucking leave your dream. Leave your dream. Le- yeah, live. I swear yeah. to God, that's what you said. <laughs> Fucking leave your dream. Like, I've had a lot of people at work tell me, like, man, there's I no really, way. They're truly jealous. Uh, there, a lot of people at work are like, man, I really wish I had a hobby. Like, I really Dude. wish I had something I love doing, like you do. Now, okay, so I have since you brought that up, I have a statement specifically to say about hobbies. A lot of people say that hobbies are like. You know, don't invest in your hobby too much. And I've, t- I've probably told you this a thousand times. Uh, don't they're always like, don't invest in your hobbies too much because, you know, it's not part of your life. It's not part of your like retirement and all that stuff like that. But I'm like, there's so many older people. There's so many older people that just don't have one. They don't have a single hobby because all mm-hmm. their life, all they did was work and go home and watch TV and work and go home and watch TV. And that's all they did over and over and over and over. <laughs> and when it comes to like they retire, they just have nothing to do because they never had a hobby ever. Mm-hmm. So they, and they, there's a statistic guys that three to five years is when people die from retirement. So, I think that hobbies are literally more important than a lot of people, a lot of people think like way more important because you're going to have to do something when you retire. Something has to happen. You have to do something that's active and like keeping you going because there's you will eventually if you do nothing but watch TV, you will die. You will absolutely die. So (laughs) your body's getting weaker. Anybody who's like you, you know, don't spend a thousand dollars on your hobby. No, you probably should. Get better at it. Of course, make life a priority, but you know, that is going to be your priority in your life eventually. Yeah. That's all you're going to have is your hobbies left. And it pisses me off when people just, they have all this money and they have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. They've got nothing to do at all in any way. They have to spend it somehow, but they got to do, they don't have to do anything. I don't know. I just think that people should really have something, have something. I I just remembered one really important story that I wanted to. It's like one of the big things I wanted to talk about. I All forgot. Right. Throw it down. <clears throat> this I had the most freak out thing, like playing drums live ever. Oh like yeah, I've, you said this. I've never had an issue like this. You said you almost had a panic attack or something. Not almost a panic attack, but I was freaking the fuck out, and it felt like one of those dreams that you couldn't do anything about because no one was looking at me. Literally everyone at that venue was watching Blake sing and I'm just in the background like struggling mentally and physically just being like, someone please, for the love of God, help me. (laughs) So literally first song, first verse of Go to Hell, uh, prior, little context, like prior to me using this drum kit, the drummer that played before us used 
everything the same besides just like the snare and cymbals. So I thought everything was good. Literally, I go into the first verse of Go to Hell, and my bass drum beater just goes, <laughs> just flies off the bass pedal. Oh my God. So, like, I'm over here. No bass drum. No one realizes it besides Brian. Brian's like, where'd the fuck the bass drum go? And I'm screaming, Roger, Jesse, anyone. Like, I was like trying to get Lloyd, the label guy to watch. Literally, I went through a whole verse and a whole chorus with no bass drum. Got into the second verse beside, like right when Jesse finally like paid attention to me. I'm over here freaking out. Like, I'm just no bass drum. No bass drum. In my years, I don't hear that Brian put a little bit of the track drums in just to have the bass drum there. So he kind of helped save it. But I'm just sitting there fucking screaming. There's a video of me playing Go to Hell, and you just see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, someone see me. I was like this close to just stopping the song and just starting over since it was like literally like at the beginning of the song. Dude, never stop. That was yeah. professional right there. Never stop. Always keep your hands moving. Always keep playing. Yeah. And so Jesse, uh, our tour manager dude, comes over and is crawling on the floor and trying to find the bass drum beater. He finds it and he puts it back into the slot, but he didn't have like the tool to tighten it. And so I'm like, okay, I got my bass drum back. <laughs> And I start freaking out and flies out again. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is this is terrible. Worst this, nightmare. It's literally first song of like label guy, label guy, label guy, label guy, big artist, big artist, signed artist, this, that. Like all these huge people that flew to New York for this. And I'm just I felt like I was gonna panic. I was going to fucking But you panic. fucking handled it. Good job, man. And it finally got to where, like, uh, I'm over here playing, and, like, I just went between one hand, and I grabbed the tool and just gave it to Jesse, and he put it, the bass drum pedal back and actually tightened it. Tightened the fuck out so, of it, like, probably. <laughs> for the last, like, minute of the song, I finally had my bass drum back. And I was just like, Why? Why? Why did that happen? I'm talking. Who didn't tighten this? I killed it the rest of the show, but like after that song, I was just so sad. But like I knew it wasn't any of my fault whatsoever. That's like, awesome. I had nothing to do with that breaking. That was purely just malfunction. My God, antics, antics. That sounds terrible. And so like I was talking to the Lloyd, the label guy, and I was just like, I don't know how that happened. He's like, dude. You killed it. I don't think anyone in this place even realized it. I'm like, I'm sure people realize that <laughs> when the drummer's back there, ah, look at me, help me. <laughs> Whenever they see that, I saw people looking at me, freaking out, trying to get someone's attention. And it was just, I was literally, it was like a nightmare because it's like, you got our tour manager standing next to the label guys, standing next to Blake's manager, standing next to this person. And all of them were facing this way and i could not get like, anyone's attention there was a solid 30 seconds before anyone even looked at me and then jesse saw him and he's like what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong and i'm just like <laughs> down <laughs> like yes it's like because i can't really talk to him and god that was out of all the shows i guess i would rather happened there than point fest but oh i my heart was just i could tell by the way you're talking about it and like the way that you're amplified already that it was exhausting (laughs) that was like one of the most uh it it it's like you get this kind of like exhilarating feeling of playing a show like you're already at this level yeah but now you're playing a show and you're freaking out you're up here. You're, no you feel is. more alive than you've ever felt alive. <laughs> That's like, awesome. I would put that in like a bad, 
Like, I know some people are scared of skydiving, but like skydiving, I love that adrenaline, that feeling of like, like, oh, if I was tired before, there's no fucking way I'm tired anymore because I'm like, I'm amped. I'm like ready to go. Yeah. And like that feeling of just like, you're already playing a show and then that happens. Your heart rate goes faster. You're freaking out. Like you just feel like, "Mm." (laughs) God, that sounds terrifying. Well, I think that that'll do it for today because <laughs> that sounds awesome. We'll probably talk about it again in another episode, but thanks guys for watching all of this. Follow us at our socials and <laughs> Austin underscore drums. Instagram Dylan.edm for all of my non posting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't posted in a while, while, uh, but there's always reasons behind that. Uh, other than that, thanks guys for watching. We're going to play something because we can, I guess. I know we barely played.